I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addicts Wife Podcast, episode number 151, Shame and Humiliation. I used to think of myself as the wife of a porn addict, but I do not think of myself that way anymore, and you don't have to either. In this podcast, I am going to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you can stop living your life around your husband's pornography addiction. I am going to teach you how to stop being the victim and how to conquer his pornography addiction, even if he never does. I'm Jolene Wynn. I am a certified life coach, and I am a member of the LDS faith and the wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. All right, ladies, today I am very excited to be talking to you guys about shame and humiliation. This podcast episode is inspired by the last day of the how to forgive masterclass that I just taught inside my coaching program. And it was so exceptional that I changed what I was going to do on the podcast and decided to teach it to you guys today. But first I wanted to share a couple of things about the calendar. Here we go, ladies. You ready to do the calendar? (laughs) I am bringing back coach week. We have coach week coming up this month in April, which everybody loves. So I'm super excited to bring it to y'all. So for those of you who don't know, coach week is when you get to come and you get to try out coaching with me. And sometimes it is just about a specific topic. And sometimes we don't have a specific topic in April. The topic that I want to do is all about boundaries. So I am calling it a how to set boundaries workshop. So this is going to be four days. It's April 17th through the 20th, every day at 12 p.m. Eastern. And you can sign up on my website by going to jolenewin.com. You can go to the Coach Week tab. All of the details are there and you can sign up. It's just $19 to sign up. You get access to all four days and you get access to the call recordings. So if you can't come live, if that time doesn't work for you, that's no problem. I would love for you to sign up energy anyway. In fact, I would encourage you to sign up anyway so that you can come and you can watch the recordings, you can get all of the content, you can access all of the calls, and then you can watch it afterward. Okay. But I would, if you can make it live, I would love for you to come live because this is where you're going to be able to ask me your questions directly. So if you come to the calls live, which they will be about 90 minutes, then you'll be able to come, you'll be able to get the material in person, and then you'll be able to get coached by me on the call. So I can help you figure out what a boundary is, what a healthy boundary is for your situation, help you set it so that you can feel safe and you can feel seen and you can feel heard, even if your husband is still struggling with pornography. So again, go to jolenewin.com. You can go to the coach week tab and it has all the information there. You can sign up directly right there. And I can't wait to see you there again. That's April 17th to the 20th. And I am just so excited to interact with you all. Okay. So that is available to all of you guys who are listening and I'm very excited to bring that to you. So I think that was all of my news all of my agenda items on the calendar. Oh, except I did want to mention that I do have a new lower monthly payment plan option. So for those of you who don't know, you can come coach with me. I have a lifetime access membership to my coaching program. Um, So you can sign up. It's $4,000. And when you sign up, you get two payment options. You can sign up for the payment plan or which just takes the cost and it just divides it up into monthly payments or you can pay in full. And when you pay in full upfront, you get a discount. You get $500 off, so it makes it 3,500. But I, we adjusted the pricing module for the payment plan option. So that was a new lower monthly payment plan. So what it is, is it just takes that $4,000 and splits it up into 12 monthly payments. So it's only 333 a month. So you pay 333 a month for 12 months. That covers the whole cost of the program. And then you're in. There's no further monthly monthly payments that get deducted. So that's entirely up to you. So it fits a little bit more into monthly budgets. So go check that out on the website. If you've been wanting to join and the monthly payment plan just wasn't working out in your budget, now is a great opportunity to come in. So go check that out. Again, jolenewin.com. You can sign up directly on my website and you'll get access immediately to all of my um, content online, all my modules, all of my worksheets. You'll get access also to our coaching calls, which we do twice a week, and then you'll be able to work directly with me. And I can't wait to see you there. All right, ladies, today I want to talk about shame 
and humiliation. This, again, this is something that was inspired by a class that I taught this week. This week I taught a how to forgive masterclass. And we talked not only about how to forgive other people, which is what we talked about most of the time, but we also talked about how to forgive yourself. And that was the main focus of the final day of the masterclass. And so when I was teaching this and I was preparing for this, I really wanted to talk about the shame cycle. For those of you who don't know what it is, don't worry, I'm going to teach it to you. But I, I, as I was thinking about it, it wasn't until I was like the day of, I was preparing this, I was talking about shame and I was talking to my husband about it. And I said, it's not usually, um, as the wife of the porn addict, the addict themselves feels a lot of shame for the actions that they've done most of, in general, right? Generally speaking, the men in our lives whom we love so dearly and are making such stupid decisions, they feel shame for what they've done, right? They feel guilty. They feel shame. Most of us as the wife of the porn addict don't feel shame in that way. For us, it comes across in a different frame, which is humiliation. And as I was studying the relationship between shame and humiliation, ladies, I had a huge light bulb moment where they're actually the same thing. They're like the flip side of a coin. And that's what I want to teach you guys about today, okay? Because it's a very sneaky way for shame to show up and we aren't even realizing it because we call it something different, which is humiliation. So today I'm going to go over the difference between the two, why it comes up, the cycle that happens in between both. And here's something that's new and exciting is that you can go watch this on YouTube now. Okay. My husband has been trying to get me to do YouTube videos and just record the podcast on video forever. And so today I'm finally doing it. So if, as you guys are listening to this, I'm going to talk about the shame cycle. And if you can't figure out visually what that means, I will link it in the show notes, but on YouTube, I have on the board behind me in the video, you will see, I have written on my board, the actual shame cycle. For those of you who are visual and you want a visual um, illustration of this, then you can go, go to the link in the show notes. Okay. So when you're listening on the podcast, you just scroll down where it usually gives you that little brief bio, that, that, that little paragraph where it's like, today's episode is called this. And this is what it's about. There's going to be a link in there and it says, go watch it here. And you guys can go click on that. Okay. Or you can search Jolene Wynn coaching on YouTube and that, and I'll, and I'll come up and then you'll be able to watch these. Okay. So today is the first time I'm having like a video of it which I'm very excited to bring to you, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. So if you're confused while I'm talking about this, if you want a visual, then you can go have a visual, okay? So let's talk about what shame is, ladies, okay? Shame, if you look up the definition, shame is a painful feeling or distress caused by consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. Now, there's a couple of things that I really wanna point out in this definition that make it super fascinating. One is that right here, it always tells us that shame is a feeling. It's a painful feeling. That's it. At its most basic. Shame is a painful feeling. That's it. Most of us spend so much of our life trying to avoid shame because of what we think it means or how we think we might feel. But at the end of the day, ladies, if you remember that the very worst thing that can happen when you feel shame is you just feel it. That's it. It can't hurt you. It doesn't kill you. You don't die. You just experience it in your body. And if you can learn how to experience emotion in your body, then it's not as scary. Does this make sense? So that's the number one thing I wanted to point out is shame is a painful feeling, but it's still just a feeling, okay? The second thing is that it says shame is a painful feeling or distress caused by consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. Now, the thing that I like about this is that it's consciousness of it, awareness of it. Like taking for a child, for example, right? A one-year-old who hits doesn't understand, doesn't have a consciousness, an awareness that it's wrong. We have to teach them that, right? So they don't automatically feel shame for something that they've done because they have no consciousness that it was a wrong decision, that it was a bad action to take. We teach them this, okay? So shame doesn't come until you have an awareness or a consciousness of that wrong behavior. You think that was wrong and I shouldn't have acted in that way. This is a huge red flag. If you're thinking things like should or shouldn't, that is a very big red flag that, oh, this might be shame, right? That's a clue that your brain is taking on shame, that you are experiencing shame. This is something I shouldn't have done. I should have behaved differently. I knew better. These are the kind of thoughts that come with shame. Now, the interesting thing about shame is, is that it's different than guilt, right? Guilt is also, I should I, I knew better. I shouldn't have done that at the same time. But contrastingly, shame then makes it mean something about you. I'm a terrible person. 
Okay, it's saying, I shouldn't have done that. I'm a terrible person. There's something wrong with me. It takes the action that you did and then makes it mean something about you. That's shame. It has an identity factor in it. Does this make sense? So it's taking that thing that you did and then making it mean something about who you are. That's the identity piece. Or it even questions who you are because of what you did. I thought I was a really good person. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Maybe I'm not who I thought I was because I did this thing that seems so out of alignment with who I am, with who I thought I was. And then you start to question who you are. Does this make sense? So shame is very different than guilt because it has that identity piece. And so you want to make sure that's, again, a big red flag or a clue that you're feeling shame rather than just guilt because you're taking that on and making it mean something about you. Okay, now let's talk about humiliation. Humiliation is different than shame. And there's a one big thing that makes it makes the big difference. Okay, so humiliation is when someone makes you feel ashamed or foolish by injuring your dignity and self-respect. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Okay, humiliation is when someone else makes you feel ashamed or foolish by injuring your dignity and self-respect. Okay, let's digest this, dissect it, not digest it. Well, let's do both, okay? But let's dissect it a little bit, okay? So first of all, you and I both know that someone else can't make you feel ashamed, okay? Shame, again, as I just went through, is a painful feeling. And if you've been here for a hot second, you know that feelings come from our thoughts, okay? So someone else's actions can't force you to feel shame. They can't force you to feel ashamed or foolish. That is because of your thought, Okay, I should have known better. I should have seen this coming. I shouldn't have trusted them, right? I feel naive. I'm such an idiot, right? These are the kinds of thoughts that we have that then make us feel foolish or ashamed because of the behavior of somebody else, okay? But our thoughts are always protecting us from the other person. Our thoughts are what create our feelings, not the other person's actions. Again, this is the best news I could ever give you because this doesn't mean that the other person has to change in order for us to change how we are experiencing it, how we feel. Okay, so again, humiliation is when someone else does something, you have a thought and you feel ashamed or foolish because it injures your dignity and self-respect. Again, that's the identity piece. It's taking someone else's actions and making them mean something about you. Do you guys see this? Humiliation is shame brought on by the actions of others rather than by your own mistakes. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Humiliation is shame brought on by the actions of others rather than your own mistakes. It's the flip side of the coin. Shame is when my actions mean something about me. Humiliation is when your actions mean something about me. Okay, now I'm going to do an example. Okay, as the wife of a porn addict, this is so common and I see this with all of my clients, hundreds of women, ladies that I have coached and all of us do this. Okay, we take the actions of the other person, the actions of our husband, and then we make it mean something about us. Have you ever felt humiliated by your husband's behavior? Because I totally have. I sent this in an email the other day and I posted it on Instagram and I got so many responses and my clients were like, yes, 100%. And I coach my clients on this all the time. I feel so humiliated by what he did. He did X, Y, and Z, whatever that behavior is, right? Whatever, think of the behavior that your husband is doing that you don't like. Have you ever felt humiliated? Do you ever feel, I feel so humiliated, right? I'll give you guys a personal example. So for me, I have felt humiliated even just thinking about the things that my husband has done, right? And I feel humiliated. What that means is I look at his action and then I have a thought that something must be wrong with me. He must be doing that thing because I'm not sexy enough. I'm not I'm not fulfilling enough. I'm not desirable enough as a woman, as a wife. There must be something wrong with me, my identity. What's wrong with me? That is humiliation. That's the flip side of shame. It's taking shame from his actions and applying meaning to myself, questioning my identity and who I am because of what he's doing. Do you guys see that? Does this make sense? Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the shame cycle. Okay, so again, if you guys are watching this, then you'll have a little bit of a visual, okay? So think of a circle. For those of you, I'm going to describe it for those of you who who aren't watching this live, okay? So you have shame at the top, 
Okay, I'm going to draw a little circle. Think of like the water cycle. Okay, that's the kind of cycle we're going to do with the little arrows in between each step. Okay, so at the top is the word shame. That's the emotion, right? So what starts it, what precipitates it is there's some kind of behavior. There's some kind of action, right? So for shame, it's your own action, right? So this would be the circumstance. The circumstance is whatever action you chose to take. And then you have a thought underneath it that creates the feeling of shame right? I shouldn't have done that. I knew better. This isn't like me, whatever the thought is, okay? And then you feel shame, okay? Now, what happens when we feel shame is that most of us hate feeling it. And I even said this in my class. I said, I would guess that most of you haven't actually felt shame. Most of us haven't because we've been so programmed to resist it. Most of us distract ourselves from it. We resist it. We push it away. We want to avoid it as much as possible. So probably most of us don't even know what shame really feels like. I know what humiliation feels like. It's easier to take on because it's not at the result of my own actions. Does this make sense? Because it's the result of somebody else's actions, there's a little bit less of humility required in order to feel it because it's not my fault. You guys see what I'm saying? I'm still the innocent victim when I feel humiliation because it's somebody else's actions. Shame, on the other hand, is when I have to take full responsibility for what I did and I don't even like that. So I have, I just processed shame, ladies, pretty much for the first time on the call on Thursday with all of my clients there. I did that on purpose and it was an incredible experience and I can now tell you that shame is just an emotion which I knew intellectually but now I've experienced it but I have been avoiding shame my whole life and most of us have because it's a very difficult emotion because of what we make it mean because when we feel it when we when we feel it coming up our brain wants to resist it because it says no I don't want to feel that because that means something about me if I feel it it's true if I feel worthless, I am worthless. If I feel shame, it must mean there is something wrong with me, okay? But shame is just an emotion, so that's at the top. So we do whatever the action is, we have a thought, and then we feel shame. Now here's what happens is most of us avoid it, and the way that we avoid it is we then tend to isolate. So if you're drawing a little arrow that goes kind of down in a circle, your next step would be isolation. We're embarrassed about the thing that we did. We kind of pull away. Now for shame, this might look like pulling away from other people. If you're thinking about this in relation to your husband and his behavior, the behavior that he did would be watching pornography as a thought, I shouldn't have done that, he feels shame, and then he's gonna isolate. What he's gonna do is he's gonna pull away, probably even from himself. He's gonna pull a little bit away from himself, he's gonna kind of suck inward, and he's definitely gonna pull away from you. And that's what leads to the next step, if you draw a little, little arrow down at the bottom, down toward the bottom is separation. This is when the pull, the isolation creates separation. When you pull away from other people, when your husband pulls away from you because he's feeling ashamed of his behavior, then he tends to, then that creates a separation between you and him. Right? You feel you with me? Now when you're doing this internally, when you're feeling shame about your own behavior, what that separation looks like is a separation of who you are versus what you've done. Right? Then you start to question your own identity. You feel a separation from yourself. And it's very disconcerting. Okay, This is when we have cognitive dissonance internally. This is when we struggle inside of us, when we have a conflict inside of us. And this is what it looks like. There's, you know, there's, there's the external separation, maybe you from the other people around you, your parents, maybe if you were a child when you did this, or maybe your spouse at the time right now, right? But there's also that internal separation, that internal separation of who am I, right? How could I have done this? Am I a fraud, right? There's that separation of, of who am I if I did this action and I feel this much shame about it and I'm making it mean something about me, then I have to like separate who I am from who I thought I was. Does this make sense? Because they're not connecting. They're opposite, Okay. Now, when we do that, that separation, then we're in this internal conflict, okay, or an external conflict, even if with our spouse, if we're separating from our spouse. And then what happens is we just continue to live life in this really tense, uncomfortable space. And if you point the arrow up a little bit, we're going upward in the cycle, then there's a trigger. Okay. Now the trigger, ladies, as you know, I hate using that word, but it is just a circumstance. Okay. There's just something that happens, whether that's your husband's work party and you don't want to go to it or whatever it is. Okay. Your husband has a trip coming up or your family wants to go to the beach. There's some kind of trigger that then brings all of your emotion back to the surface. And that's the arrow that leads to the next one, which is then you act out. 
Okay. Now acting out for an addict means they have a trigger. There's some kind of circumstance that happens. They have a thought which creates an urge. And if they give into the urge, that means they act out on the desire to go watch pornography, which means they go watch it. Okay. Whatever that looks like for them, whatever, whatever behavior it is that they have, the acting out is the pursuing of the behavior. Okay. It's the action that they take when they give into an urge. Okay. So they act out on it. And then that leads to more shame. Okay, because it's the exact same behavior that created the shame in the first place. Now, when you're thinking about that internally, right, if you're like, oh my gosh, who am I? And then there's this trigger that kind of brings all of it back up to the surface. The acting out may look a little bit different. And for everybody, that is a little bit different. Acting out may, again, still look like avoiding. It may look like trying to distract yourself from the shame. It may look like overeating. It may look like um, over consuming alcohol, or it may look like over exercising, whatever it is that you're doing, to, it might look like sleeping a lot, whatever it is that you're trying to avoid feeling, that's the acting out, right? Like whatever actions you're taking when you feel this emotion, it might look like yelling at your kids or yelling at your spouse. And then you're behaving in such a way that doesn't reflect who you are. And then you feel shame again. And then the cycle repeats. You guys with me? Okay. <laughs> so that is the shame cycle. And we get stuck in this ourselves so much. Again, we don't typically think of ourselves getting stuck in this as the wife of the porn addict. I hope you guys were able to follow it as I kind of illustrated it for both, both him and for you, what it looks like for him, what it looks could look like for you, not in regards to pornography, but in regards to whatever it is, whatever it is that you feel ashamed about, whatever action you're taking that then you think this isn't who I am. This is not a reflection of me. I should behave differently. I shouldn't yell at my kids. I must be a bad mom. That's shame. You're taking a thought, right? I, or, or an action. I yell at my kids and your thought is I shouldn't have done that. And then you make it mean something about you. And that's shame. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago in the last couple of podcasts. Okay. You guys can all about shame. We're talking about all about shame, right? And it's, and it's taking something you feel and making it, uh, um, tying it to who you are. You're tethering it to your identity. I must be a bad mom. And then we have humiliation, which does the same cycle. And that's what I want to talk about too. The humiliation cycle is something I made up. This is not scientific. You can't go prove it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, this is what came to my mind as I was studying this and preparing this. And it just like was so exciting to me. I just, I had to share it with you guys. The shame cycle is out there. You guys can go look it up. I didn't make it up. The humiliation cycle, ladies, I am just creating it. And it's the exact same one. The humiliation cycle and the shame cycle are the same cycle. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Again, humiliation is at the top. So my husband did an action, right? Because this is the difference between shame and humiliation. I didn't take the action. My husband did or whoever, right? My mom, my best friend, my garbage man who hit my, my dog and killed, you know, like well, whoever it is. Okay. Think of the thing that you feel humiliated about. Okay. The boy in fourth grade that pulled your pigtails or the girl in ninth grade who made fun of you because of your acne, whatever it is. Okay. And you feel humiliation about it. They made the action. That's the circumstance. And then I have a thought. This is so humiliating. I hate this. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, the thought that you have, you have, but it make it mean something about you and you feel humiliation. That's the top of the cycle. Okay. Now what happens when you feel humiliation is we tend to isolate. We withdraw. Now, <clears throat> taking the example of our husband being addicted to pornography, because that's the one we always use. When my husband watches pornography or has thoughts about other women, and I don't want him to. And then I think, why is he doing this? Maybe it's because there's something wrong with me. And then I feel humiliated. I feel humiliation. I feel that emotion. And then I tend to isolate. I pull away, right? I kind of want to withdraw. I don't want to show up vulnerably, right? And that isolation leads to the separation between him and I. I don't want to engage with him in the same way that I did because I feel humiliated. I feel like I'm not enough. I feel something that's making me want to isolate from him and even isolate from myself. I don't even want to look at the emotions that are coming up and I certainly don't want to share them with him. And as long as I'm feeling those and they're inside of me, it's very difficult to show up and connect because I feel so vulnerable, so raw. You guys with me? So we tend to pull away. We tend to separate and isolate ourselves from our spouse. Okay. 
Now then what happens is then we have a trigger. Like I said, there's some kind of trigger. The husband has a Christmas party or maybe he looks at his phone, whatever the trigger is. And all of a sudden, all that emotion that you've been burying underneath the surface comes right back up and then you act out. Now, this, again, is going to look different for everybody. But if you're thinking about it in relation with your husband, I want you to think about, okay, what is it that I do when I have all of this emotion come to the surface? Do I yell? Do I pull away even more and go silent? I've had so many clients that do the silent treatment. That's their favorite. Okay. Or do I hold a grudge? Or do I um, get really snarky and bitter? I've been talking about this the last couple weeks on the podcast with resentment, right? And, And a lot of it is this, it breeds this resentment because of look what you did to me and this is so terrible that I have to feel this way and I didn't even do anything wrong. And then your brain starts to keep score and you compare yourself, right? Or maybe you just lash out and you yell at him, right? Whatever it is, then that's the acting out. But then that's not really who we are. We don't like who we are when we do that. And then we feel shame about that behavior and we feel humiliated still about what he does and we're still right back in the cycle. You guys see that? This is the shame and humiliation cycle. It's exactly the same. It's just the flip side of the coin, okay? Now, I'm going to give you guys the key to getting out of both of them. You guys ready? The key to getting out of the shame cycle, because again, remember, shame is when you take something that you did and you make it mean something about you is separating who you are from what you've done. It's creating and understanding who you are, your solid identity is independent of the actions that you take. Now, this is very tricky because we grow up thinking that our actions are a reflection of who we are and to some degree that is correct. However, it's also possible to take an action that does not truly align with who you are and your values and who you are at your core. Right? You guys with me? Do, would you agree with that? I mean, I don't know about you, but I have done things in my life that I that are big mistakes that I feel like were not aligned with who I am, right? They are not a true reflection, an accurate reflection of who I am, right? So getting out of the shame cycle, if you're in it, the key to that is starting to learn how to separate who you are from what you've done. And ladies, when you learn how to do this, this will also help you. This is something that I teach my clients all the time, is learning how to separate your husband who he is from what he's done or what he's doing. They're two different things, okay? Okay, again, that is a skill. That is a thing you have to learn how to retrain your brain to think, okay? Separating who you are from what what you've done. That's how you get out of the shame cycle once you're already in it, okay? Now, the key to getting out of the humiliation cycle, which is, again, when you take someone else's actions and make it mean something about you, is the same thing, okay? It's understanding how to separate who you are from your relationship with others, okay? It's understanding and identifying yourself as an identity, as an individual, regardless, regardless, regardless of the relationships that you are interacting with. Okay, for example, it's understanding that you have an identity that you bring to the relationship rather than getting your identity from the relationship. You guys with me? Have you guys, the, the example that comes to my mind is when I was in middle school and high school, I remember there were, there, there were girls that just were always in a relationship. Do you guys know those girls? Maybe you were one of them. You were just always in a relationship. Like they almost didn't even know how to define themselves if they weren't in a relationship. It's like, do you even know who you are if you don't have a boyfriend, right? They only knew how to define themselves in relation to another person. And ladies, we do this all the time. I talk about this in my book. When we're first young, when we're babies, and then we're just starting to grow up, we identify ourselves in relation to others. We identify ourselves in relation to our families and our communities, right? When I was growing up, Win is my maiden name, right? And I was a Win. I was the youngest of seven kids. My oldest brother, he's 10 years older. So I was in the middle school and the high school starting at the age of like four. We were always, my mom was the PT president, like everyone knew our family. We were at every football game and band concert and everything in between. And my brothers played all the sports and my sister was dancer. And so like we were always everywhere and everyone knew who I was. They would say, oh, you're a win. And I was like, yes. And I just knew, 
right? Because that's how I identified myself, was in relation to those around me. Now, and as you grow, this is what happens when we become adolescents, right? Adolescents care less about identifying themselves in relation to their family, and they care more about identifying themselves in relation to their peers, right? Or by their activities. I'm a swimmer. I'm a good student. I belong to National Honor Society, right? I'm the student body president, whatever it is. We start taking on our identity from what we are doing. And then as you grow up, we continue to do that. We take our relationship and our identity as part of who we're interacting with. I'm an employee, right? Or maybe by what we graduate with from college or our job, right? Or even as I'm married, I'm a fiance, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, okay? Do you guys see this? So getting out of the humiliation cycle is starting to understand who you are independent of all the roles and relationships that you interact with. It has nothing to do, who you are has nothing to do with who you interact with, okay? Who you are is completely independent of that. You can understand who you are and you have to understand who you are independent of your relationship with others, including your husband. Otherwise, you're never gonna get out of this humiliation cycle. You have to be able to separate who you are from the actions of others and this is key and this is what I work with my clients with all the time is learning how to separate who they are from what their husband is doing. And this is the best news ever because this means that you can move past this and start going forward and start working through everything even if he doesn't change because it doesn't mean anything about you, okay? So if you're in those cycles, the key is starting to separate your identity from the actions, the actions that you're taking or the actions that other people are taking. And that's how you get out of the cycle if you're in it. Now here's the key of never getting in it, is understanding that even if you take an action or someone else takes an action and then you have a thought that brings up the feeling of shame temporarily, you don't have to get stuck in the cycle. What you can do instead is just move out of it. You can just never get into the cycle. Now that doesn't mean you never feel shame. What it means is you feel shame and you process it. Rather than what happens in the cycle is you feel shame and then you isolate. Okay, it's a different action. You feel the shame. There's the circumstance that happens, whether it's your action or somebody else's, you have a thought, you it feels shame or humiliation. The action that you take is you process the emotion and that creates a completely different result versus when you isolate or when you lash out or when you make it mean something about you. You can feel shame, you can just experience the emotion without making it mean anything about you. And the reason that I know this, ladies, is because I just did it. On Thursday, in the last day of this How to Forgive Masterclass, I sat on the call, I taught this more in depth for like over an hour, I taught this concept of shame and humiliation and we went through so many more examples. And then I sat there and I said, you know what I wanna do? I wanna sit down and I want you guys to watch me process an emotion. And that's what we did. And I processed something that had been coming up for me in my preparation for this class. And it was my own mistake, a mistake that I made years and years ago. And I sat there and I processed it on the call and I allowed myself to experience shame and just feel it. And that's how I can sit here and I can tell you. And then I did it. I had done it the previous day with a client. She sat on the call and she just felt shame and processed it with me. And it was so beautiful. And that is how I'm able to sit here and tell you that the worst thing that can happen when you feel shame or humiliation is you just feel it. There's nothing that can happen to you. It can't hurt you. And you don't even have, once you process it, ladies, you don't have to get back in there, okay? You bring who you are into your relationships versus allowing those relationships to define who you are. And this is really what's gonna help you separate your husband's actions from your worth. Your husband's actions, his behavior, him watching pornography has nothing to do with your worth or your value, zero. Okay, and this is how you start to separate it is you start to understand that his actions don't mean anything about you and you don't have to make them mean anything about you. So if you notice that you're in the shame cycle or the humiliation cycle, then I want to offer that you take those keys and you start working on those thoughts and you start separating who you are from the actions of your, from the actions that you took or the actions that somebody else took and know that they don't have to mean anything about you. Does that have to mean that you're okay with it? No. Does it mean that you want it to happen again? No. But it means that you understand that it was separate and it doesn't have to apply meaning to who you are.
All right, ladies, if this was helpful for you, I want to encourage you to come join my coaching program because this class in and of itself was worth, was probably the best class that I've taught in over a year. I would say I loved it. I was so excited about it. And I would love for you to have access to it, which you do if you join my coaching program. Okay. All right, ladies, I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you guys next week on a brand new episode. So take care. Hello, my lady. I wrote a book and I would love for you to read it. It's called The Not Enough Wife and you can get it on Amazon today. This book is for any woman who has ever felt like she wasn't enough, not enough as a wife or as a mom, if she didn't have Instagram worthy enough pictures, if she didn't throw Pinterest worthy parties, if she ever felt like she was not enough, this is the book for her and it's for you too. So go to Amazon today, go search up The Not Enough Wife by Jolene Wynn and grab a copy for yourself and for all the women in your life. I hope you love it and I can't wait to hear what you think.